Hey everyone, I'm John with Roadkill Incorporated. Did you hear that? Let me do it again. That is the sound of an original Macintosh floppy drive's gear mechanism failing to eject a floppy disk because the plastic gears have disintegrated. And when that happens, the only way to get the disk out is with a paper clip. And I think I need a new paper clip. Anyway, today with these replacements, I'm going to attempt a fix, and it better work because I don't want to have to think of a different video to make this week. Okay, so I got this gear set from MacFX, and you can see their page here. These were actually out of stock for months, so I set up an alert and they came back in stock a couple weeks ago, and I grabbed a few. You can 3D print them yourself, but I've heard some horror stories. As it says, they are for Omron motors, so let's hope my Mac here has an Omron. The problem seems to happen from the original Mac up through the Mac SE, but don't worry, if your Mac has the problem, it will let you know. To open an old Mac, you need what is commonly referred to as a Mac cracker, which is just a super long screwdriver to get to the deeply receded screws. It's a T15 Torx screwdriver, pretty big Torx tip. You can get them on Amazon for like $9. So you take out the four screws here, two on top, two relatively accessible on the back bottom. Then you pull the back off, which can be a bit of a challenge. Sometimes if you have the screen facing down, you can pull it off more easily. Most of these have been on there for 40 years, so it's like removing the door of an Egyptian tomb for the first time. It doesn't really want to come off. Oh, whoops, I forgot this screw. I think the Mac 512 has this additional screw, but other models like the SE don't. Okay, there it goes, now it comes off. Okay, so there's the floppy drive assembly. You wanna remove the cable. Make sure not to bump the tube neck. It's easy to do that, and if it breaks, it's game over. We're going to have to take the board out, so remove the connector to the board. It's pretty cool, in this model, there's just one cable to the board. In SEs and SE30s, there are more than that. Make sure to thread the floppy drive cable through so it doesn't get caught. And you basically just pull the board upward and it slides along the metal rails on the left and right. Although it can kind of get jammed in there, so you just have to work it back and forth. Okay, and the reason we took the board out is that it obstructs access to the four screws that fasten down the floppy drive assembly. So we'll take those four screws out. I believe in other models you may not have to take the board out, and the screws are up above that connect it to the computer, so this process may vary. And now the whole floppy drive assembly comes out just like that. Now we'll take out the four screws to remove the drive from the cage or assembly or whatever you want to call it. And now I'll take the drive out and moment of truth, is it an Omron motor? And oh my god, thank you, it is. It's an Omron. I'm so glad. I don't know what I'd do if it was something else. Anyway, the drive is pretty dusty looking. There are three screws holding in the Omron, so we'll take those out. And the gears are covered up by this metal plate. Again, three screws. So the plate comes off, and wow, look at that. There are the gears. They don't look too terrible. They should lift right out. Here's the top one. Oh, cool, and we definitely do have some damage in there. You can see how a few teeth on that smaller gear are broken off. That's good to see. Now we know we're actually doing the right repair. So I'll take that one out too, and yeah, here's a great view of the missing chunk. And I'll try to get out the broken pieces. I actually wonder if it's the broken pieces jamming it more than the missing teeth. Hard to say. Anyway, I'll remove those, and I'll put in the replacement. Funny thing, all three gears in the pack are the same one, so I guess this is the one that has the problem. I had been under the impression that you use all three from the package, but I guess the one pack of three is good for three computers. Now I'll put the top back on, and there we are, repair all done, hopefully. So as it famously says on iFixit guys at this point, now you just do the reverse and put it all back together. Actually though, before we put it all back, let's clean the head with alcohol and a q-tip, as well as this metal rod here. Might as well loosen up some of the dried up gunk. Okay, so what I'll do now is test it while the machine is open. I always recommend doing that if you can, because it sucks to put a machine all the way back together just to realize you forgot some small dumb thing. Alright, it's making great drive noises and it boots up fine. And moment of truth. Yes! Yes! It works! Amazing! What a relief! This is my first time doing this repair, so I really didn't know what to expect. Now this can be a real video. 
This is sort of cool. Inside the case, we have all the signatures of the engineers and designers. Lots of computers have this, but it's always kind of fun to see these things. I should write my name in here. John Bumstead, replace the floppy drive gear. And finally, all together, let's verify it still works and is not being jammed up in some other way. Yes, every time it works, I tell you, it's still such a relief. And now that we're done, I'll address the elephant in the room, which, obviously, is why is this computer bright red? And the answer is, I don't really know. I bought it a year ago on eBay from someone who didn't know himself, and I've done a couple videos on it, and someone did tell me that he heard a story about Steve Jobs putting on some sort of show or event, and he had a bunch of original Macs painted in different colors, and perhaps this is one of those? Sounds kind of unlikely to me. He famously wanted to be rid of the past and would throw away older material. But hey, I think I'll choose to believe this story because it, it sounds great. Regardless of that, it's painted pretty well. It's not perfect. It has a couple nicks and scratches, but it seems better than your average spray paint job. I actually sold it on eBay for $1,000 a while ago, but they sent it back because of this very drive ejection issue that I just fixed, so now I'm going to sell it again. Anyway, enough rambling. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it was informative or mildly amusing or both. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>